Well, hello! First time in. Yes, yes, I can see by your gaping mouth that it is. Oh, uh, I'm so rude. Allow me to introduce myself. Hubert Thorne, at your service. Now, what brings you in today? Maybe something to brighten up your dorm. Merlin knows they're dreadfully dull. How... how did you know I was a student? Oh, I was once at Hogwarts myself. Yes, indeed! That's where my talents for Herbology really took root. <laughs> now, let me see. Hmm. I've got it. Right over here, if you would follow me. This glorious species screams you to me. What do you think? I can afford it. Right, right. Well, just a student. Hmm, how about something a bit more economical? And by that I mean free. Free sounds good. Yes, well, <laughs> this will take some work. Really put your herbology skills to the test. Follow me. Not dead, just not thriving. It's much too crowded in here for puffer pods, you see. Customers constantly bumping them, causing them to bloom. It's exhausting for the little fellas. What do you say? It's my very last one. All right, why not? I'll give it a go. Excellent. If you can revive this puffer pod to its previous picture of perfection, I'd say you have the makings of a budding herbologist. Anyway, I'm trying to revive it. But who knows? Maybe herbology is my calling. I'm going to ask Professor Longbottom for advice after class. Ah. <laughs> ah. <sighs> 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 Ah! Ah! Uh-oh. Looks like Professor Longbottom might have something else for you to worry about, Kevin. Oh! Start with something less toothy. Oh. Ah. Whew, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. But it was also sort of fun. Oh. 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 Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, 
Professor. Actually, I, I was wondering, could you take a look at my plant? I've been trying to revive it, but it's getting worse. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. I got it from that new plant shop in Hogsmeade. The owner... Hmm. Oh. 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 Great. Thanks, Professor. Ah. Well, hello! First time in. Yes, yes, I can see by your gaping mouth that it is. Oh, uh, I'm so rude. Allow me to introduce myself. Hubert Thorne, at your service. Now, what brings you in today? Maybe something to brighten up your dorm. Merlin knows they're dreadfully dull. How... how did you know I was a student? Oh, I was once at Hogwarts myself. Yes, indeed! That's where my talents for herbology really took root. Ha 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 ha! Now, let me see. Hmm. I've got it. Right over here, if you would follow me. This glorious species screams you to me. What do you think? Right, right. Well, just a student. Hmm, how about something a bit more economical? And by that I mean free. Free sounds good. Yes, well, <laughs> this will take some work. Really put your herbology skills to the test. Follow me. Oh, it looks dead. Not dead. Just not thriving. It's much too crowded in here for puffer pods, you see. Customers constantly bumping them, causing them to bloom. It's exhausting for the little fellas. What do you say? It's my very last one. All right. Why not? I'll give it a go. Excellent. If you can revive this puffer pod to its previous picture of perfection, I'd say you have the makings of a budding herbologist. is my calling. I'm going to ask Professor Longbottom for advice after class. Longbottom might have something else for you to worry about, Kevin. 
Oh! Something less toothy. Oh. Ah. Whew, that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. But it was also sort of fun. Oh. Wondering, could you take a look at my plant? I've been trying to revive it, but it's getting worse. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. I got it from that new plant shop in Hogsmeade. Owners said customers kept bumping and hmm. Oh. 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 Great. Thanks, Professor. Ah. What happened? That, I was hoping, is something you could tell me. Professor McGonagall? What's going on? You don't know? A professor and a student are practically petrified. And the witch who was supposed to be helping has gone missing. What are you talking about? How did I even get here? Oh, dear. Are you telling me you have no recollection of this evening's events? No, not a one. Wait, why am I here? <sighs> I'm afraid you were found in the corridor, standing over your classmate, clearly befuddled. I don't remember any of that. Can't you take my memories to the pensive? At the moment, it seems you have no memories to retrieve. I understand this is difficult, but please... All I see are images, like... Snapshots of moments in time. That's as good a place to start as any. Tell me about one of them. There's an odd-looking witch. She's got something to do with plants, I think. Ah, that would be Ms. Cole. She came to us from St. Mungo's, intent on helping find an antidote to the so-called mysterious malady. Oh, that I remember. Kevin told me about it. Wizards are falling asleep. No one knows why, and no one can wake them up. Precisely. The Ministry sent Ms. Cole to work with our professors, and then things went... awry. Interesting that you can't recall her arrival. It was quite... dramatic.
that plant is dead, right? It's not dead, it's just not thriving, and it's much better than it was. <laughs> if you say so, I hope you're not considering a career as a healer. <laughs> ha ha, very funny. May I have your attention, please? I would like to introduce a special guest. Ah, it appears she has not yet arrived, but no matter. Miss Astrid Cole, a former student and current healer at St. Mungo's, will be joining us to help some of your professors devise an antidote for the mysterious malady you have no doubt heard about. Now! Could you let my boy get mauled by a fanged geranium? You should be ashamed of yourself. How you're still allowed to teach is beyond me. Beheading that vile snake does not make you the chief warlock in charge. Uh... And it wasn't even Professor Longbottom's fault. If Fisher had been paying attention, um... Interesting plant you have there. Oh, I, I remember that. She creeped me out. Do you recall what happened next? No, I mean, I see flashes of memories, but they're all mixed up. As long as something is in that head of yours, we may be able to retrieve it. Drink this. It's a mild memory potion. Ugh! Ugh! That tastes awful! I think you forgot the peppermint. Thank you for that assessment. I'll be sure to inform Professor Slughorn. Now, tell me, what do you remember? Hmm... Okay, things are becoming clear now. Let's see. I was late for Herbology, but when I got to the greenhouse, something was wrong. greenhouse obviously that much I figured out thanks what's he doing here mr. Thorne they must be consulting with him he does know absolutely everything about plants it's her you should be wondering about who miss Cole uh, yes just look at her lurking in the shadows I don't think she's lurking may I have your attention please it pains me to tell you this, but Professor Longbottom has been found in this very greenhouse, asleep and unawakenable. While it was once unthinkable, it appears the so-called mysterious malady has made its way to Hogwarts. I, for one, am here to help in any way I can, Minerva. Just name it. I appreciate that, Hubert. Now... As it appears the Ministry is correct in their belief that plants are the cause of this sinister sleeping sickness, this greenhouse will be off-limits to students until further notice. Mr. Filch, if you please. Everyone thinks plants are to blame. Idiots. That's right. 
Astrid said people were idiots to think plants were to blame. I remember that now. In my experience, those at fault are those who flee. And Ms. Cole is nowhere to be found. Can you recall anything else? Is it dead yet? Excuse me? That sickly plant of yours, is it dead or improving? Oh, um, improving, I think. Curious. Well then. She's been to visit him every day. Just stares. Never says a word. Maybe she's not sure what to say. Or maybe she's just a weirdo. Madam Pomfrey says she's always been that way. Always? Since she was a student. Apparently, she wasn't very sociable. No friends. Not even in her own house. Hmm. That is surprising. It's suspicious. Although, for some reason, the matron is still quite Apparently, fond of her. She helped collect herbs and administer potions to sick students, even during the Battle of Hogwarts. Really? Wow, that's commendable. It's dangerous is what it is, letting someone like that tend to the sick. Who knows what's going on in her head? <gasps> what was that? Not what, who. Astrid, lingering outside, eavesdropping on our conversation. I told you, she's not to be trusted. If I heard someone talking about me the way you were just talking about her, I'd stay outside too. I only speak the truth. Based on what? You don't know her. And you do? Right! Cassandra really didn't like Astrid. I can't believe I forgot that. Well, it would seem that particular piece of information is no longer forgotten. What else can you recall? This is going to be the best lesson. Mr. Thorne is a proper genius when it comes to herbology. We're lucky to have him. I thought you liked Professor Longbottom. I do, but... Well, he doesn't own a plant shop, does he? Oh. Thank you, Professor Sprout. Ha <laughs> ha! Sprout and Thorn. We make quite the pair, don't we? Clearly, we were born to be herbologists. Ah, yes. I see quite a few familiar faces. Happy customers, no doubt. For those who don't know, I own a shop in Hogsmeade called Bewildering Blooms. Plants are my passion, particularly those of a magical nature. This, for example, is a Thorn original. I call it a bloom for you. As the name suggests, it blooms only for one. Please, everyone, take a closer look. Didn't work. Sorry, my dear. This one's mine. Ah, there. You see, my handsome face has finally awoken her beauty in all its glory. I've sold hundreds to some rather famous wizards, too. And no, Miss Vole, I'm not going to tell you how I did it. That's my little secret. 
Now, I believe your professor was teaching you about some of the more unpredictable plants, like the Chinese chomping cabbage. This one does have a bad attitude, but remains a vital ingredient in potions such as Skelly Grow. Definitely worth getting to know, shall we? Her again. What's she doing here? Hello. Can I help you with something? No, definitely not. Well, that was rather rude. All right, then. Back to your plants, everyone. Huh? She is different. But is that a bad thing? Yes! For once, I agree with Daniel. She's trouble. Just yesterday, I saw her at Mr. Thorne's shop, snooping about. Or maybe she was just shopping? Spying, more likely. I don't trust her. I remember that. I wanted to stick up for Astrid, but I didn't. I don't know if I was starting to think she was guilty, or if I was just afraid. I hope the next memory is better. I decided to talk to her, to see if Cassandra was right. Gossima said she spent a lot of time in the dungeons. This doesn't look good. She attacked you? Yes, well... No, I don't think she meant to hurt me. Hmm. I doubt a trained herbologist would be so cavalier with a dangerous plant such as a mandrake. Maybe, but I think it was an accident. In fact, I remember what happened after I woke up. You're awake? Good. I trust you can stand. Um, yeah, thanks. Sorry about the mandrake. They're just at that age. Too young to cause any lasting damage. Probably. You're, um, Miss Cole, right? Call me Astrid. I'm not one of your professors. Right. Astrid, okay. So... What is this place? Temporary laboratory for growing potential antidote ingredients. Which I was promised would be safe from nosy students. Uh, I didn't mean to intrude. Perhaps I should be going. No. Stay. Might as well now that you've caught me. 
You poisoned the professor? No, of course not. What I meant was that you caught me playing detective. Father was a criminal investigator. He made boards just like this one to help him sort through clues and suspects. I call it my thinking board, because it helps me think. You're confused. I'm not surprised. I have that effect on people. Sorry, I thought you were here to brew an antidote for the malady. I am, uh, but to do so I need to understand what I'm up against. There's more to this mysterious malady than meets the eye. It's not just a poisonous plant? Ha! You sound like my colleagues in the Ministry. Always eager to blame what they don't understand. Just because something is dark and scary doesn't mean it's evil. Take this mandrake, for example. Dangerous, yes, but also an essential part of many antidotes. I can certainly attest to the dangerous part. Hmm, yes, I know I'm... different. I've seen the looks. They've followed me most of my life. Trust is much easier to come by when one is handsome, outgoing, normal. Like your fill-in professor, for example. Do you mean Mr. Thorne? Yes. He arrived moments before your professor fell ill, and no one has looked twice at him. Well, he is well respected and quite friendly. Oh, I see your point. Indeed. Neville understood. We shared more than just a passion for plants. He also knew what it meant to be underestimated. I can't let him down. I must solve this mystery. Uh... No. Neville needs my help here and now. I won't let him down. Right then. I'll help you. You agreed to help her? I did. Because of Professor Longbottom. He's been so kind to me. I just... I had to help. I applaud your allegiance, but to offer aid so easily... It was more than that. I don't know why, but... I'm sorry. I guess I'm not being very helpful. On the contrary, this conversation has been very illuminating. But perhaps it's time I shared something with you. I found this in Ms. Cole's lab, pinned to her, uh, what did you call it? Her thinking board. This photo was in the center of it. I see. And what about this one? Cassandra? No, I didn't see this one. Why is there a line through it? Nothing's happened to her. Wait. Oh no! Cassandra! Just like the professor. Yes, but unlike Professor Longbottom, this time someone was there to see it happen. You were there. No, but the memory's still not clear. I remember walking down a corridor, talking to someone, and then we found Cassandra. That's it. If I could just remember who I was talking to. I believe I can help with that. You were the one I was talking to? <laughs> it was Gossamer who alerted me to your unfortunate condition. By the time we found you, you'd wandered back to the greenhouses and were trying to chat up a Mimbulus Mimbletonia. Oh, um, sorry. No need to apologize. Now, if you wouldn't mind, Gossamer, please tell us what happened. <sighs> As 
Astrid? What... what did you do to Cassandra? Thank you, Gossamer. You may go. It just doesn't make sense. There must be something I'm forgetting. And you have Ms. Cole to thank for that. Clearly, she doesn't want you to remember. But she was trying to help. All evidence points to Ms. Cole, does it not? Her curious wanderings, the secretive lab, the photographs, and then there's the matter of the plant she took. The one Cassandra was holding? Why would she take that? I don't know. What I do know is that plant wasn't Miss Vole's. It was meant for me. Hmm? I don't understand. It was one of those bloom-for-you plants that Mr. Thorne has been selling. He was hoping to get my recommendation, but the flower failed to bloom. Hmm. Miss Vole volunteered to return it to his shop. Hmm. And Astrid took it. It must mean something. Perhaps. What do you know about Mr. Thorne's creations? Not much, except that Cassandra was obsessed with them. Don't see what the problem is. I've got the money. Name your price. While I would happily take your galleons, my dear, I'm afraid crafting a bloom for you takes time. Plus, there's a waiting list, you see. A waiting list? Do you know who I am? When my father hears about this... I'll be right with you here. In a moment. In the meantime, be sure to check out our wide selection of seeds, fertilizer, and planting benches. My assistant can help you. I see you're interested in starting a garden. Marvelous. Maybe. I have had some success growing things lately. Ah, of course. You're the young student who rescued one of my ailing pufferpod plants. Tell me, how is it doing? Thriving, I hope. Better than expected, actually. I don't suppose you have any suggestions for how to, um, slow the growing process? Hmm. Well, you always could try a little aggressive pruning. Thanks, Mr. Thorne. And sorry about Cassandra. She can be rather intense when she's obsessed with something. Obsessed? Huh. Really? Brilliant. She said that. She did. Cassandra's really into herbology. I'm pretty sure she'd do anything to get her hands on one of those bloom-for-you plants. Hmm. I may have misjudged Miss Vol. got what she wanted. <sighs> Don't be so pessimistic, Daniel. I'm just happy to be outside. I wonder what Mr. Thorne has in store for us today. Good afternoon! Today we'll be collecting plant samples as part of the effort to find a cure for the so-called mysterious malady. The very same ailment that has befallen our beloved Professor Longbottom.
Mr. Hagrid has agreed to act as our guide as we descend into the darkest depths of the Forbidden Forest in search of our curious quarry. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, yes, a mite too dangerous. Perhaps a nearby clearing then, if it's not too much trouble. <laughs> Excellent. All right, everyone. Gather your things. Don't forget your dragon hide gloves. And be careful where you step. What do you think you're doing? Uh, teaching? Is that not obvious? Seems rather upset, doesn't she? I wonder what's wrong. Clearly, she's jealous that Mr. Thorne is actually doing something. Bobblehead charms? My goodness, whatever for? Fine, do what you want. But when more victims end up in the hospital, don't say you weren't warned. Astrid was very upset. But I don't think it had anything to do with being jealous of Mr. Thorne. I think she was worried about us. How so? Well, she did warn that there could be more victims. Are you sure that it was a warning? Or could it have been a threat? If I could just talk to her. An option she has sadly not given us. Perhaps it's time you accept that Ms. Cole is not who you think she is. That's enough for one night. We'll revisit this tomorrow. Hopefully a bit of rest will help restore your memory. Yes, Headmistress. Kobe, how's Cassandra doing? Ah. Sorry, she didn't deserve this. I just wish I knew what happened. Ah. I don't suppose you know anything about the plant she had with her, do you? It was one of Mr. Thorne's bloom for you flowers. Uh. It's all right. I know it was supposed to be for the headmistress, but it didn't work. Cassandra was returning it to... <gasps> Wait! She didn't have anything to do with it not working, did she? Uh... It's not complicated. Mr. Thorne needs a hair to make his bloom for you flowers work. That's how it knows who to bloom for. He asked me to get one of McGonagall's, but I'm going to give him some of my hair. He won't know the difference. Ugh. You two can be so dense. The flower won't bloom for the headmistress. It'll only bloom for me. Astrid, where have you been? How could I have missed it? It was so obvious. What do you mean? What did you miss? Miss Vole was a mistake. <laughs> Corby, wait! Hey, what are you doing? No more games. You're coming with me. What's the matter? Neasel got your tongue? Right. Silencing charm. Just a precaution. I couldn't have you interrogating me in the corridor. I wanted to get here unnoticed. What do you mean interrogating you? I... See? 
always with the questions. Of course I have questions. You sneak around, do Merlin knows what to Cassandra, steal her plant and then disappear. And you cursed me so I couldn't remember any of it. Don't be daft. I obliviated you, not a curse. I had to figure things out and I didn't need you talking to your friends. Or worse, McGonagall. Well, I don't appreciate you messing with my memories. Noted. What else did you want to know? What am I doing here? Kidnapping is a ministry offense, you know. This isn't a kidnapping. I need your help. Professor McGonagall found your thinking board. The photos of Professor Longbottom and Cassandra had access through them. Why? I omitted them as suspects, so I crossed them out. Suspects? The Ministry was right about one thing. Plants are involved in the so-called mysterious malady, but someone is behind it, using plants to spread the sickness. So... I started investigating people who know plants. It quickly became apparent that neither Longbottom nor Cassandra were the culprit. Not that I suspected Neville for a second. Why did you take Cassandra's plant and run? I told you. I needed time to sort things out. And as the plant was obviously dangerous, I didn't... <sighs> Never mind. Didn't what? I couldn't risk you being infected too. I wanted to get it far away from everyone. What did you do to Cassandra? Nothing. I was trying to help her. You saw me. What I saw was you standing over her, looking guilty with your wand out. You've got it all wrong. I suspected those ridiculous bloom for you plants were dangerous. When I saw Cassandra with one, I tried to take it from her. That couldn't have gone well. It did not. She said it was hers. To prove it, she made it bloom. Cassandra was asleep before I could cast a spell to stop her. That's when you showed up. I know this is confusing, but if we don't move quickly, someone else is going to end up in the hospital. Look. These are all victims that were discovered recently. They've all received Bloom for Use. But the plant was so popular, Ministry investigators didn't think twice about it. Mm -mm. There's more. Look at the captions. Mm, I don't understand. A mum, a Quidditch player, the Minister of Magic. They have nothing in common. They fought at the Battle of Hogwarts. And now someone is using the bloom for you plants to poison them. But why? Don't know why, but I do know who. Look. Mr. Thorn? But he's so nice. Why would he... Right, sorry. Don't judge a wizard by his big smile and fancy flower shop. There's no one in his usually packed shop now. We should set off. Perfect time for an investigation. What do you mean, we? He's not here. Maybe we should come back later. Don't be absurd. Mandrake, fully grown. They're deadly in battle. This one is still young, but it will knock out anyone in earshot. Yes, I remember. Right, that's what the earmuffs are for. Let's go. Look over there. I'll go that way.
Find anything? Well, a lot of hair, which is disgusting. Right. The secret to the bloom for you plants. What a narcissistic concept. I also found a journal of recipes with pages torn out. He must have been experimenting with potions. Poisons, not potions. He was looking for one that could be delivered by his novelty plants. Who do you suppose is next on his list? No, Cassandra tricked him by now. He's going after Professor McGonagall himself. We have to stop him. The Three Broomsticks? Never heard of it. Do you know where it is? You don't get out much, do you? <laughs> Come on, I hope we're not too late. Madame Rosmerta said Professor McGonagall was here. Thorn, too. They left together. We just missed them. That's good, right? They can't have gotten far. Let's hope not. Come on. What was that? We're too late. Oh, I wasn't expecting company. Back away from the headmistress, Thorn. I know what you're doing. <gasps> of course you do. You've been onto my methods since that day in the forest. There must be a poison. Keep the students safe with bubblehead charms. And I must say, well done. Well done indeed. I knew you were close, but to connect moi so quickly to the malady has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? The mysterious malady. Stop stalling! You're through! Just giving credit where credit is due, my young friend. Now, while I hate to give up such a lucrative business, I'm afraid I must take my leave. think it's me, you know. That I did it, alone. You? That's preposterous. You're nothing but a glorified matron. Unfortunate taste in clothes, I might add. Very disappointing. I've years of experience and you're just a student. As someone obsessed with the Battle of Hogwarts, you should have learned to never underestimate a student. You used the mandrake. Good. Oh dear. <laughs> you think you've won, don't you? Obviously. You're the one who's tied up. But it is I who have prevailed! Thanks to my ingenious plan, those responsible for defeating the Dark Lord will pay the price. Pretty sure you'll be the one paying the price. Specifically, all the galleons you stand to lose, watching your life's work disappear. You know nothing. A vault filled with gold, which I have, by the way, would not sway my hand. I will gladly pay any price, knowing the Dark Lord's enemies are lost in slumber. Forever? Just as he was lost without form for fourteen long years! 
I will be his vengeance, his greatest champion. I will be remembered forever. Wouldn't it have been easier to just, you know, get rid of them? My dear girl, where is the artistry in killing? But there's nothing you can do about it now. Only I know the antidote to my poison. Try as you might, you won't be able to crack it, Miss Cole. You're wrong! Astrid is a genius! I don't know about that, but I do know you shouldn't leave your notes lying about when you're trying to hatch an evil plan. I have everything I need to make the antidote and prove you are to blame, not the plants. How's the antidote coming? Slow. I've been at it all night. Reminds me of working with Madame Pomfrey when I was a student. Cassandra mentioned that. What did you do? At first, just collecting herbs and administering simple potions. But after the Battle of Hogwarts, the matron needed my help with everything. There were so many injuries and casualties. That sounds awful. You have no idea. That's when I began to appreciate how dangerous plants could be a force for good. And when I decided to become a healer. Well, I'm glad you did. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here to fix everything. Ah, there it is. Could you get my wand? It's by the roses. Roses? Uh, oh, I didn't know you like, um, y you know. Plants most people would call pretty. Yeah, that. Well, I do. They're for my mum. <laughs> Ouch! Watch out for the thorns. Very deceptive plants, roses are. They're gorgeous, but dangerous in their own way. I think they're amazing, thorns and all. <laughs> I'm sure your mum would love them. Well, she's dead, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Obviously. How could you? Mum loved roses. So, on her birthday I leave a bunch on her grave. I remember pricking my thumb on a rose thorn when I was small. She laughed and said it was a good life lesson. A lesson? Yes. She said, don't assume beautiful things can't hurt you. And then she explained how everything wonderful needs to be handled with care. Even I don't follow. She worked for the Department of Magical Accidents and Catastrophes, so she saw what being careless with magic can do. That's what killed her, trying to clean up a magical mess. That must have been awful. I was devastated, but Dad took it even harder. I've never seen someone miss another person so much. Anyway, that was a long time ago. May I have my wand? Oh, right. Sorry. All right. The antidote is ready.
the antidote. Is that true? Yes. Well, I hoped. Astra did most of it. Hmm. I guess she isn't as incompetent as I thought she was. Ugh. How can he still be sleeping? After the matron gave him the antidote, he woke up, asked what happened, and fell straight back to sleep. As you well know, Miss Vole, Thorn's poison did not induce a restful slumber. Quite the contrary. Professor Longbottom also suffered the effects of the poison for much longer than you or Professor McGonagall. It's difficult to predict how long it will take for him to fully recover. Miss Cole, I do believe I owe you an apology. Not only did you create the antidote, you identified the culprit. I cannot say that I agree with your methods, but the results speak for themselves. For that, I thank you. You're welcome. Now, I suggest we let Miss Volg... An apology from Professor McGonagall? That was impressive. It was unnerving. I think I owe you an apology myself. For what? For doubting you. The only problem with doubt is not doing something about it. You ask questions, and the answers led you to the truth. In the end, that's all that really matters. I guess so, but I should have known you had a reason for disappearing, and that it was a good one. I mean, there's no way you could be an evil mastermind. Why? Am I not smart enough? <laughs> I mean, well... Hmm, just kidding. I know I am. Always complaining, aren't you, sis? Even though the little baby gets everything she wants. The only thing I get are your miserable hand-me-downs, Romilda. Now leave me alone. I have work to do. Besides, where on earth did you put my diary? Silly Miranda. Always scribbling in her secret diary. It's not a diary. It's a spell journal. Don't know why you bother. You'll never be any good at charms. Maybe you should try divination. Oh, Diadema. I think she just needs to practice. Have fun finding your journal. Toodaloo. I'll be good at charms someday. You'll see. and I'm starving. 
If Madam Pince catches you, she'll have your head. It's just one chocolate frog. Madam Pince can go jump in the black lake. Uh... Uh-oh. And that's why you're not supposed to have chocolate frogs in the library. Come on, Robin. I'll help you catch it. Channel, like really old. Miranda Goshawk. Oh, didn't she write the book of spells? What are you doing here? I thought you had detention. I was supposed to, but Madame Pince let me off with a warning. Well, that's a first. I got lucky. Some fifth year triggered a Gemino curse in the restricted section, so she has her hands full. What does that mean? Well, if you thought the library was crammed with books before, you should see it now. <gasps> really? They're all the same book, Kevin. Oh, right. Well, uh, cheers to your good fortune, then. I'll uh, see you later. Now, let's see what secrets Miranda's journal has to share. I'm so glad Madame Pince didn't confiscate you. Now that was lucky. Problem, how do I get people to shut up and listen? Solution, perhaps a distraction? Bogies, or bat bogies? That's why she invented the bat bogey hex, to get people to be quiet long enough to hear what she had to say. That's weird. Her sisters must have teased her a lot, and she was the youngest of eight. And this entry, it says Miranda wanted to give her man a magical bouquet of flowers. And her sisters told her the incantation was Taran Telegra. But that's the Dancing Feet spell. Oh, how mean. They tricked her into casting the wrong spell on their own grandmother. It's no wonder she wanted to write books on proper spell casting. Oh! -ho! Sir Nicholas! Sorry, I didn't see you there. Hmm. Uh, no, that's not what I meant. You just startled me. Hmm. <laughs> right. Um, you were saying something about proper spell casting. Hmm? Uh... Miranda says in her journal. Oh. Ah. What happened? Couldn't you straighten them? Oh. Hmm. Oh. I 
think that's why Miranda wrote her book. She wanted everyone to have a chance to learn magic, without the complications. But there's still one thing I don't understand. Hmm. Ugh. It's obvious Miranda put a lot of thought into this journal. Why did she leave it behind? Oh. I suppose young witches can be unpredictable. And mean. I never thought I'd say this, but yes, I was saved by a curse. Still, I'm really sorry. It's my fault you got in trouble in the first place. I promise I'll never eat chocolate frogs in the library again. Or, at the very least, I promise to keep a better grip on the ones I do. Oh. Hmm. I'm just glad Madame Pince didn't take this. You joke, but Miranda Goshawk was brilliant and important. Oh. Hmm. Ugh. See, in Miranda's day, spellcasting instructions were incredibly complicated. She really struggled to make sense of them. Ah. Imagine how much more difficult the reading assignments would be if Miranda Gorsalk hadn't written our textbooks. Oh, I shudder to think. Oh, this must have been Miranda's journal from when she was a kid. I bet it's a treasure trove of knowledge. Silencing charm? Yes! I've been struggling to cast it for weeks. Every toad I've practiced it on has swollen up to an immense size and made deafening sounds. But thanks to Miranda's notes, it finally clicked. You're so lucky you found this. It seems like a great resource. I'm only partway through. But I've already learned so much about spellcasting and Miranda herself. I can't wait to see what else is in here. <coughs> That's odd. Everything from this page on is illegible. You're right. I wonder if it's been charmed to keep others from reading it. I'll do some research and see what I can find. <coughs> hmm. 
Uh, after I take Robin to Professor Flitwick to get this silencing charm removed, uh, of course. to charm for whatever spell was making Miranda's journal illegible? Yes. Well, we won't know if it actually works until we try it. Journal, please. <gasps> it worked! I can read it now. What does it say? Well... This page contains instructions for some sort of spell that I don't recognize. A secret spell? Oh, this journal finally got interesting! Give it a go! I don't know. Miranda hid it for a reason. What if it's dangerous? My curiosity is killing me, so that's a risk I might have to take. Oh, believe me, I'm going to know as much as you are, but... Don't worry, Kevin. We'll be careful. Do it! Well, that was anticlimactic. Ah! Was that us? It had to have been. <laughs> a spell that makes you sprout a tail? Brilliant! What? She's got a tail. Big deal. My brothers have done worse to me. Poor thing. I feel bad. She'll be fine. Madame Pumphrey will fix her right up. I just hope we don't get in any trouble. Well, I know one way to help us avoid any trouble in the future. I'm going to return this journal to Miranda. Now, was that local or international delivery? So you're really going to give the journal back to Miranda? Yes. It's a great resource, but if it was my journal, I'd want it back. Although, I'm mostly returning it because... Miranda will be in my debt if I do, and I might be able to convince her to give me some private tutoring. Oh, sure very Slytherin of you. I can't condone your methods, but... I'd be lying if I said the idea of you getting to study under Miranda Goshawk didn't make me jealous. Still, there's one thing I just can't figure out. What was Miranda's journal doing in the library all these years later? Could Miranda have hidden it there when she was a student? I suppose we'll Who's never a pretty know birdie? Sure. You are! Yes, you are! Good day. Do watch your step as you come in. Owls are magnificent creatures. But they don't make the tidiest roommates. Hello. Here to send an owl, are you? Mm. Mm sent her journal back. Maybe she doesn't want to be reminded of her annoying sisters. What does the letter say? How thoughtful of you to return my journal. But there was no need, as I still have the original. How is that possible? You see... When I was at Hogwarts, my sisters were fond of teasing me. Reading my private journals or hiding my belongings whenever they fancied a laugh. 
I see you broke my enchantments on the pages in the back. Well done. Eventually, I duplicated my most prized possessions. It took ages to decipher the instructions for the doubling charm. But once I had, it became the most useful spell I knew. When Romilda banished the journal in the library, and I was unable to summon it. A common occurrence at the time. I didn't fret, for I had another copy safely tucked away in my dormitory. I have no use for two copies of my ancient ramblings, so I'm returning this to you. I've erased the less kind notations in the back, hoping you can use this cleaned up version to hone your own charm skills. Or toss it in the fire as kindling whatever suits your fancy. Yours most sincerely, Miranda Ghosthawk. P.S. I must confess that I did get a spot of revenge on my sisters with a few misprints in their signed copies of Book of Spells. Romilda had a tail for weeks! Ha! Sounds like my kind of witch! She does seem suspiciously fun for someone who writes textbooks for a living. I think she's brilliant. In fact, I'm feeling inspired already. Hmm, what do you think? Butterfly bogeys or badgers? <laughs>